Hello guys, in this video, I'll explain transmission comparison instructions. Then we'll improve the water tank project. During the project we'll learn how a function with input output can be defined and used. Note that, these are transmission comparison instructions, and I'll improve this previous program, related to the water tank. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright. Let's start with CMP instruction. It gets two values and compares them algebraically, and based on these conditions, turn on a bit address. Note that, when a bit address like M0 is considered as its output, this instruction will use two next addresses too. For now, if the first input is greater than the second input, M0 will be 1. If two inputs are equal, M1, and if the first input is less than 10, M2 will be 1. Note that, there are three other similar instructions. The CMPP instruction works similarly, but it's only sensitive to rising signal edges, not to its level. The next similar instruction is DCMP, which works with double word memories, in another word memories with 32 bits. So, if an address is used like D0 at its input, this instruction will consider that and also the next address, as one variable with 32 bits. Or if a constant number is used, PLC will use 32 bits to store it. Finally, DCMPP instruction works based on 32 bits and also is sensitive to rising signal edges. Pay attention to these letters. This rule of using letters P and D is usually true for other instructions. So, after this slide, only the basic instruction will be explained. The next instruction is ZCP, Zone Compare. It gets three numbers. The first and second inputs determine a lower and upper bound. Then this instruction checks the last input in these statements, and then turns on a bit address. Note that, this instruction uses 3-bit addresses at its output such as the previous instruction. For example, if the last input is equal to 50, the second statement will be true, so, PLC will activate M1, and turn off M0 and M2. Note that, like the previous instruction, there are three similar instructions by using letters P and D. The next instruction is move. It moves a constant or stored number, to another address of PLC. I explained this instruction before. Let's go to the next slide. The next instruction is smooth. It is able to reallocate or combine data. Note that, this instruction has two similar modes, based on this special bit memory. First, assume M1168 is disabled or zero. Now consider these numbers as initial values of D10 and D20. Note that, the second input, M1, determines a digit of the first input. It can be a number from 1 to 4. M2 determines how many digit we need, after the selected digit. So, until now, M1 and M2 have selected these digits of the first input. The last input, N, is similar to M1. It determines a digit in D20. Now, if I activate this contact, Smooth instruction will move these selected digits to here. So, the stored number in D20 will change to 5128. Note that, these are valid ranges of M1, M2, and N. Now, if I activate this special bit memory, the smove instruction will work with hexadecimal format of entered numbers. At this time, these two digits are selected. So, if I activate this contact, the SMOV instruction will move these two digits to desired position in D20. Therefore, D20 will change to 1040. That's equal to 4174 in decimal form. Alright, the next instruction is CML. For now, 
it reverse all bits of D10, and store the result on D20. Now let's see how BMOV instruction works. For example, now, the contents in 3 registers starting from D10, will be moved to 3 registers starting from D20. The next instruction F move, works similarly. But it move only one number to selected addresses. Let's continue. As you see this instruction, XCHP, has two inputs. For this example, it exchanges the content of D10 and D20. If their initial value be 1 and 5, after one execution, their values will be 5 and 1 respectively. Note that, this instruction has a special memory. If I activate M1303, then I can exchange the lower and higher part of an stored number. Pay attention to this point, if the simple XCH instruction is used, data may be exchanged frequently. Alright, like decimal, binary and hexadecimal formats, another favorite format to store number is BCD. It used 4 bits to store each digit of decimal number. We can use BCD instruction, and also bin instruction to convert these formats together. Now, let's do a practical project with factory I.O. software. Let's start with the water tank system, which was explained before. At this time, here are two extra digital displays. If you remember, this digital display is used to display the current level, and this one displays the desired level. But what about when we need to display a big number, such as the current water volume in cubic centimeters? It can be calculated by this formula. Maybe, this value needs more than four digits. So, I used two digital displays for that. As you can see, now, the current water volume inside the tank is equal to, 84 7800, in cubic centimeters. Actually, my program calculates the water volume, then separates its lower and higher part, and stores each part in an individual memory, finally send them to these two digital displays. Let's see how the previous PLC program can be extended. During that, we'll learn functions block, and also we'll use BCD and bin instructions. Let's start with this program, which was explained before. If you remember, this part control the water tank manually. The next three networks calculate some parameters like the current level and desired level. Finally, PLC will enable these networks, when the automatic mode is selected. So, I can divide my program to three parts. To have a better program, I can use function blocks which was explained in the previous video. So, let me select the first part and right click to cut them. I want use them inside a function. So, let me create a function with this name. FB0 manual. Now, let me right click and select the paste item. Note that, I used this contact to activate the manual program. So, let me delete it inside the function, and use that to activate the manual function, inside the main program. Similarly, let me use two functions, for two next parts of my program. Alright, this program is equivalent to the explained program at the beginning. I've just moved each part to a function, and then call them from the main program. Now, let me extend the program. I want to create a function to get the water level and calculate the water volume. So, let me create another function. As you see, each function block, and also the main program have a local symbols table. Now, let me create a new symbol. The first symbol is level. Note that, I don't know the current level. It's not a constant number, but it is calculated by the main program. So, let's select this item, 
var input. Now the new symbol considered as the function input. I don't need to determine a data register for that, but I must select its type. Well, to calculate the water volume, I will need some intermediate variables. So, let's create them. At this time, I don't change the selected item, and also I must determine a memory address for that. Well, let me select double word. I usually prefer to do my calculations based on 32 bits. Therefore the symbol will use D100, and the next address, D101. Similarly, let's create another symbol. Now, let's calculate the water volume based on this formula. I need some demol instructions. For the first input, let's use the level symbol, for the second one, assume the tank radius is 50 centimeters. Now, I save the result on the first intermediate variable, and again multiply it by 50. Well, I need another demol instruction. Well, I have to multiply the previous result by 3.14. But this instruction works with integers, not with real numbers. Although, there are instructions for real numbers, but for now, let me multiply it by 314, and then divide the result by 100. Okay. I need another intermediate variable. Note that, only variables which are matched with the demol output, are visible. I've forgotten to change the new symbol data type to double word. Now, I need to use a division instruction. Alright, the water tank volume is calculated. Now, I'm going to create a new symbol. But I will change its class to var output. Note that, input and output variable don't need to determine an address for them. Only, their data type must be selected. Note that, this instruction uses 4 words, 64 bits, to store its result. The first two words are used to store quotient part, and two extra words are used to store reminder or fractional part. So, let me modify the last symbol data type. To define 4 words, I can use the array item. Here. I select word data type, and then select how many words are needed. Now, let me use the last symbol, as the function output. Note that, I'm ensure double word addresses can store intermediate and also the final result. Let me calculate the maximum value, when the water level is 300 centimeters. Well, this is the maximum number during the calculation, and it can be stored with 32 bits, double word data type, and this the maximum water volume inside the tank. Now, let me use the new function inside the main program.
As you see, the new function is a little different with these functions. It has one input and also one output. I must connect the input to an address which stored the current level. I don't remember it. So, let's open device comment list. Here I can see all used addresses and their comment. Well, until now, these addresses have been used, and also, D8 has used to store the current level. Let's use that for the first input of the new function. Now, let me use a free data register to store the calculated water volume. Remember, four words have been considered for this output. Therefore, PLC will use D20 and D21 to store the integer part of the final result, and also, D22 and D23 to store the fractional part. I only need the stored value by D20 and D21. Also, if you remember, we didn't assign any address for input-output variables, inside the function block. Because, PLC uses these addresses for input-output variables. Note that, I can use the last function with another identifier, to calculate another water tank volume, or enter a constant level to calculate its final volume. So. If you need some codes which must be repeated frequently, you can write them inside a function, and then call the function as many as you want. Ok, let me delete this function. If you remember we had a problem. The water volume is too large to display on one digital display. To solve this problem, I decided to use two digital displays. Now, I have to divide the final result into two parts, and send each part to a digital display. First, let me add a dbcd instruction to my program. Well, this instruction converts the stored binary number in D20 and D21, to its bcd form in D24 and D25. D24 will store the lower part and D25 the higher part. Then, I use two simple bin instructions, to convert each part to its binary form. Alright, as you see, my program divides the calculated water volume into two parts successfully, and then, sends them to two digital displays. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.